and three weeks, four weeks ago, um, and I have been daily driving the vehicle ever since. Um, so what I'm going to give you is my full opinion on how I think the car is as a daily driver, as a sports car, and just as a all-around vehicle, really, um, by BMW. So I bought the Z4M a year ago uh, with the intentions of, you know, maybe using it as a daily driver. I had two cars at a time. One was S2000, and I bought this to replace the S2000, being that they're two-seater, supposed to be convertible. This is the coupe version, the Z4M coupe. And um, I was daily driving that S2000 at the time. I don't go far to work, fortunately for me. You know, I only drive the car maybe five to ten miles, and then on a, on a lunch break um, and home, and then on the weekends I'll use it because I'm not putting a lot of miles on. So to that point, um, the Z4M didn't seem like much of a compromise for me, coming out of a, a S2000 and. Previously, a BMW 135i dual clutch, um, and ever since I had that, that dual clutch, uh, it was a great car. It was great for daily driving in Atlanta, but I don't live in Atlanta anymore. And you know, South Florida, I, there's not a lot of traffic, and I don't live far. I don't need that automatic anymore, so I went manual after that. So, what does this car do well? Well. It looks really, really good, first and foremost. Um, I think it's one of the best looking BMWs ever made. My personal favorite, coming from my 135i, obviously. The, the 1M is probably my favorite looking because it looks so much like a Bulldog. But this, in a lot of ways, looks like, um, I've said this many times, like a Ferrari to me, like a BMW Ferrari, uh, like, a, like a baby exotic. So to me, it looks really special, unlike any other BMW I think that's out there. Um, you know, having the color gray, people say that you get looks in the car all the time, this, that, and the other. I don't find that necessarily to be true. To be honest with you, um, most people don't know what it is. And if they're wondering what it is, they're not really staring, or I don't catch them staring. Maybe I don't look over much, but you know, I don't get that much attention. And even among the BMW fanboys, you know, not a lot of people uh, know exactly what this car is. There's so limited amount made in the coupe, and then the, the Z4 and Z3 M's being that they were like convertibles. I don't know if they didn't have such a big following. Not like the Clown Shoe, which is like a has a really passionate uh, following. But these cars, they don't get the love that uh, an E46 M3 with the same engine would, or or the E92, being as it may with all of its issues. Um, so it's a, a very specialty vehicle, I think. And it, it doesn't know what it wants to be necessarily, right? It, it does a lot of things right, um, being that it's got the S54, it's got enough power for the, the size and the weight. Um, it looks really good, it handles really good. It's still softer than like a, a true sports car in S2000. The suspension is in between um, what would be a, a 135i and uh, maybe a more hardcore like 370, 350z, right? Um, it doesn't know per se what it wants to do. I guess it wants to be a luxury sports car, not a Mercedes because those are much softer. They can't take corners. Um, but it, it it does a lot of things right that you that the intangibles especially that you you can feel like it's raw it still has that connectivity to the e46 like when driving was raw but it also has that connection to the the e92 which was a newer vehicle and more refined and, and removed so it was easier for daily driving when, when cars were getting bigger and things like that so I got the version without the GPS so there's no real technology here you have I just got to work the Bluetooth um, for the phone calls you got the standard radio 
Uh, there's no Sirius XM. There's nothing like that. It's got the upgraded stereo, which is great, so I don't have to go ripping out a sound system and sticking a subwoofer in the trunk if I don't want to. Um, you know, it does, it's got everything I want uh, and nothing that I don't need or anything that is going to age really badly. just so flimsy that once you keep pushing them in and out they will break so cup holder solution you gotta get an aftermarket cup holder ultimate cup holder works great box test two large boxes four soda can boxes a gym bag two Arizona teas tire inflator there's your battery See if it closes. Hey. So let's talk about like the engine. The S54 was always, in my opinion, a reliable engine. Um, every BMW suffers from the same problems with the oil leaks. And not having a turbo really relieves any of those problems that the, the N54 had with like the high pressure fuel pumps and the turbo rattles and stuff like that. The N55 I had in my 135i was very reliable as well. It just had oil leaks and common problems like that. Um, no real issues. As far as actual problems with the car, you know, I haven't, uh, I'm doing an oil sample analysis because I read some things about maybe the S54 has rod bearing issues. I wouldn't know that to be true if you warm your car up properly. Nani? stiffest chassis for the S54 that it ever came in. Um, there's no subframe issues, no suspension known issues that I know, just general repair and maintenance um, can keep the S54 pretty healthy and oil changes, religious oil changes and checking the oil. Um, and that brings me to oil leaks that I had when I bought the car. I bought it knowing that I was going to do maintenance because it had been not maintained properly. Um, or lack the maintenance because it was a flip by somebody so when I got it I was going to do all the, the oil change and the tires and the brakes which I did and the valve cover gaskets and the, I did the, the crank seal and a bunch of other things um, I had a mechanic work on because I want to get it done right the first time for sure and there was always this oil leak that I could never figure out and it would come from the back right of the engine so after changing the valve cover gasket two three times I finally figured out so that the back of the engine, the valve cover, was not securing um, the engine. So then what was happening was that it was always this oil leak no matter how many times I changed the valve cover gasket. And I ended up going through three valve cover gaskets before we really figured out the issue. Um, and now we're all good. But, you know, that wasn't cheap trying to figure that issue out. And if I had known that from the start, I wouldn't have had that issue. So I'm partly to blame for not knowing. 